Hello and welcome to this special channel where we'll be discussing the last words of one of the greatest WWE superstars of all time, Billy Graham. Billy Graham was born on June 7, 1943 in Phoenix, Arizona. He grew up to become one of the most iconic and colorful personalities in the professional wrestling industry. In his heyday, Billy Graham was known for his muscular physique, his flamboyant wrestling attire, and his charismatic personality. Over the years, Billy Graham had been outspoken about his life and career, sharing many insights with his fans and followers. However, it was his last words that really captured the attention of the world. In this video, we will be exploring those final words and the impact they had on his legacy. The first thing that needs to be noted about Billy Graham's final words is that they were incredibly poignant and heartfelt. He understood the importance of his position as a wrestling icon and wanted to use it to spread a message of positivity and hope to his fans. In his last words, Billy Graham spoke about the importance of living a life of purpose, of pursuing your passions and following your dreams. He wanted his fans to know that no matter how difficult life may seem, they should never give up on their hopes and aspirations. He also spoke about the importance of taking care of your body and your mind. As a bodybuilder, Billy Graham understood the value of physical fitness and healthy living. He was passionate about spreading his message to his fans and encouraging them to take care of themselves. Another important aspect of Billy Graham's last words was his commitment to his faith. He was a devout Christian and often spoke about the importance of his faith in his life. In his final words, he emphasized the importance of trusting in God and relying on his guidance and support. In conclusion, the last words of WWE superstar Billy Graham were a powerful testament to his legacy. He used his platform as a wrestling icon to spread a message of hope and positivity to his fans, reminding them to pursue their dreams, take care of themselves, and trust in God. His words will continue to inspire and motivate all those who hear them, and his legacy will live on as one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Early years, 1969 to 1972. In 1969, Coleman was encouraged by professional wrestler Bob Lueck to train with Stu Hart for the latter Stampede Wrestling promotion. He trained under Hart in Calgary before debuting on January 16, 1970 in a match with Dan Crofat. After wrestling briefly under his real name, Coleman traveled back to the United States in May, wrestling for a few months with Dr. Jerry Graham, Brick Darrow, Rick Cahill, and Ron Pritchard in Arizona before he and Jerry Graham joined the National Wrestling Alliance Los Angeles promotion run by Mac LaBelle as a tag team the following August. He changed his ring name to Billy Graham as a tribute to the famous evangelist of the same name. Later, while wrestling in championship wrestling from Florida, the name would serve both as his ring name and to make him the youngest brother of Jerry and the other Graham brothers, Eddie and Luke. American Wrestling Association, 1972-1975 On October 2, 1972, Graham premiered in Vern Gang's American Wrestling Association or AWA based in Minneapolis where he took on the moniker Superstar. As he toured the North Central states and adjacent areas of Canada, Graham feuded with Gang, The Crusher, The Bruiser, Wahoo McDaniel, Billy Robinson, Ken Petra and Ivan Koloff, the latter becoming his tag team partner. By this time, Graham was integrating into his performances not only arm wrestling contests but also weightlifting challenges mainly involving ex-Olympian Ken Petra and posing routines. One of his most memorable feuds was against McDaniel, with whom he wrestled numerous bouts between 1973 and 1974. Among the matches they participated in were Indian strap matches. It was during the feud with McDaniel that Superstar also teamed with Koloff to take on McDaniel and the Crusher in tag team matches. It was also during his time in the AWA that he began wrestling Ivan Putski. Worldwide Wrestling Federation and Return to NWA 1975-1976 Graham made his in-ring debut in the World Wide Wrestling Federation on October 25, 1975 in a tag team match at the Boston Garden in which he and Spiros Arian defeated WWF heavyweight champion Bruno Sammartino and Dominic DiNucci. At this time, the Grand Wizard became Graham's manager. Another major feud at this time was the Polish muscle man Ivan Putski. A brief contract with the NWA in Houston, Texas followed from June to August 1976, after which Graham went on his second tour of Japan, this time accompanied by Ivan Koloff. He feuded with Antonio Inaki during his Japanese run. After returning to America, 
Graham and Koloff made an unsuccessful attempt to launch their own wrestling promotion in Southern California. In November 1976, on the invitation of Dusty Rhodes, Graham joined the NWA promotion in Florida, beating Rhodes for the Florida heavyweight title on November 22 at the West Palm Beach Auditorium. His work in this period included occasional visits to St. Louis, Missouri, where he took on NWA World Heavyweight Champion Harley Race. Graham returned to the WWF in April 1977 after an agreement with promoter Vincent J. McMahon. Graham defeated Bruno Sammartino for the WWF Heavyweight Championship on April 30, 1977 in Baltimore, Maryland. Graham held the title for nine and a half months. Return to NWA and hiatus, 1978 to 1982. Disillusioned by the loss of his belt, Graham left the WWF in December 1978 and accepted an offer to join Paul Bosch's promotion in Houston, Texas, lending himself out for other NWA events in California and Florida as well. In April 1979, he embarked on his third IWA tour of Japan where he wrestled the same wrestlers he'd worked with in 1974. On October 8, 1979, Graham became the Continental Wrestling Association or CWA World Champion defeating Pat McGuinness. On November 8, 1979, Graham lost the belt to Jerry Lawler in Lexington, Kentucky. His following NWA engagements in Kentucky, Tennessee, Hawaii, Georgia, and Texas became fewer until he stopped wrestling in May 1980. He competed in the 1980 World's Strongest Man that May, placing in 7th. This is when he shaved off his long blonde hair and sideburns, transforming into a bald head and mustache. He would work in Phoenix, digging underground sprinklers. On March 14, 2004, Graham was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2004, the night before WrestleMania XX. By then, World Heavyweight Champion Triple H, whom Graham had helped inspire to become a professional wrestler. Graham later sold his WWE Hall of Fame ring to purchase anti-rejection medications to help treat his liver transplant. Several months later, Graham joined WWE on a swing of nine televised events when he was interviewed by Jonathan Coachman on December 28 before performing a skit which ended with Coachman getting knocked out. On February 25, 2005, Graham appeared at another live event and was again interviewed by Coachman before knocking him out. Three days later, Graham appeared on Raw where he encouraged Randy Orton to do something to make himself notable. On October 3, a WWE homecoming, Graham participated in a legend ceremony with 24 other WWE legends. On the January 23, 2006 episode of Raw, he promoted his book and DVD. Graham parted ways with WWE in 2009. Fifth return to WWE, 2015-2023. In November 2015, Graham announced that he had signed a Legends contract, a long-term deal to make infrequent, non-wrestling appearances in a Facebook post. He signed a renewed five-year contract in 2021. Speaking of his legacy, Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer newsletter wrote, If it wasn't for Billy Graham, this industry would be so much different than it is. Roberta Morgan's 1979 kayfabe book main event stated, Although he's a rule bender, Graham has managed to stay very popular with his fans, probably because of his skill, strength, and colorful personality. As a headliner in Madison Square Garden, which was the WWF's primary arena throughout his tenure, Graham sold out 19 of 20 shows. Finally, Billy Graham's last words were also marked by a sense of gratitude and appreciation. He recognized the incredible blessings in his life, including his family, his friends, and his fans. He wanted to express his gratitude to all those who'd supported him over the years and helped him achieve his dreams. Thank you for watching this special of our channel. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel for more content and leave a comment below to let us know your thoughts on Billy Graham's last words.